So I'm Dr. Dan Bettis. Uh, I work in the glaucoma division of the Department of Ophthalmology uh, here at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. So glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve. Uh, the optic nerve is a cable uh, that exits the back of the eye and uh, goes to the brain and it carries uh, visual information to the brain. Um, Glaucoma is sometimes, but not always, associated with uh, increase of intraocular pressure or pressure within the eye. Um, and over time, it can lead to a progressive loss of the peripheral field of vision. Unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of warning signs or symptoms associated with glaucoma. Some people have called it the sneak thief of sight for that reason. Um, it's often uh, detected just with a routine screening exam. And so um, those screening exams become very important. You know, there are certain recommendations that are based on age, understanding that uh, glaucoma is more common as we age, so that persons who, even if they feel like they have healthy eyes, um, starting at age 40 should have examinations every two to four years. And then that steadily increases so that people who are over age 60 should really probably be having an eye exam every year, even if they feel that their eyes are healthy, to try to pick up diseases such as glaucoma. There are groups that are uh, at increased risk uh, compared to others for glaucoma, and that includes people who have a uh, first degree family member who has glaucoma, maybe a mother, or a father, a brother, or sister, uh, and then certain ethnic groups, unfortunately. So things like uh, people like uh, African Americans, Hispanics, or Asians, unfortunately, those groups uh, can be at higher risk for glaucoma, so one would uh, want to be watched a little bit more carefully uh, to see if they were developing signs of it. Uh, so current treatments for glaucoma first start uh, with medications or drops that are given to the eye to lower the eye pressure to uh, decrease the risk of damage to the optic nerve. Uh, there are also laser treatments that can be done in the clinic uh, to accomplish the same goal. And then traditionally there's been a, a gap, you know, a gap after those uh, medical and laser treatments where um, perhaps we're not entirely comfortable you know, with, with how a patient's doing, but uh, we're not quite ready to go to a surgery to lower the eye pressure. Uh, there have been good surgeries for, for decades, you know, to lower the eye pressure, but uh, they have uh, a certain recovery period that's involved. Uh, they have uh, a lot of follow-up uh, visits that are involved, and, and we still do those um, uh, with regularity to help protect people's vision. Um, but there is a newer uh, category of surgery for glaucoma called minimally invasive glaucoma surgery or microinvasive glaucoma surgery. And the goal of that surgery is to maybe fill in that gap um, where uh, perhaps someone's not doing quite so well on uh, drops or laser therapies but you're not quite ready to go to one of the more invasive surgeries yet. Um, that's where uh, these minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries can come in. These um, are sometimes combined with cataract surgery. Um, and uh, they aim to optimize or increase the eye's own natural drainage uh, pathway to lower the pressure. And so they tend to have uh, less recovery time and then um, uh, in many cases less potential for uh, serious side effects. So in someone who felt like they were at increased risk for glaucoma, I think the most important first step is to simply have an eye exam. It doesn't necessarily have to even be with a glaucoma specialist. It could be uh, with their local eye care provider. Uh, what that eye care provider might do to look at their risk for glaucoma is they might check the eye pressure uh, at that appointment. They may perform a test at the peripheral field of vision. Uh, this is uh, the, the form of the vision that is uh, preferentially affected by glaucoma, but we don't exactly notice in day-to-day -day life because it's way out there at the edges, and so uh, they may perform a test to look at the function of that. They may check the thickness of the clear front window of your eye or the cornea, which, um, funny enough, it turns out that that can be one of the things that affects our risk for glaucoma. And then they'll examine the optic nerve. They may take some pictures of the optic nerve to look at its appearance and whether it appears uh, healthy and robust or if it appears to be thin in certain areas, which um, can be true in glaucoma.